So, Gabiag Bonglo, you know, the most reliable, knowledgeable pundit in the world and the most successful player who's won five Champions Leagues, three the Ligas, four Club World Cups, three Super Cups. Oh, wait, that's not him. That's someone else. I, uh, I wonder who that could be. So, for those who aren't familiar with Gabby Bonglaho, he's a pundit on TalkSport, former player for Aston Villa, and he's had his say on Wales in the World Cup this morning. Firstly, Gabby joked the Wales won't get out of the group. You'll you think you're getting one. out of the group? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I think we'll beat... It's not three teams, We'll beat you know, the USA. Three teams don't get out of the group. And fair play to him, that's completely plausible. It's not only possible, which of course is possible, but yeah, it's completely plausible too. We might not get out of the group stage. America might beat us to it. Iran might beat us to it. Who knows? Obviously, I'm back in my country as well, so I'm back in Wales to get through the group, of course, but that doesn't mean that everyone else has to. I'm not that delusional where everyone has to sit, have the same answer or opinion as me. Of course, it's completely possible that Wales don't have a strong enough side to get out of the group, of course. But to completely write off Wales from qualifying from the group, but to say that we're guaranteed to finish third, is I mean come on saying that though it's been done before we have been written off a bit too early in 2016 and uh yeah look at that one I'm all right with the banter though it just comes with the territory of football you know it's football banter it's one of those things you always say your mate's team's gonna lose all this shit or this that and the other when deep down you don't either believe it you don't think it or you're just saying it's gonna rise out of them it's just a bit of fun but there is something else in this video that puts a bit of a bee in my bonnet especially as someone who's Welsh of course and likes footy no no Welsh player would get anywhere near England's best 30 players available. 30? 30. That's yeah. just, like, there's no need for that bit on the end. There's 20, 25 in the squad. <laughs> 26. 26 in the squad, four more. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm picking Tony before Bale. I'm picking um, Bowen. Now, I'm sorry, but that's just not true, is it? That's an absolutely fraudulent take. I know that Ivan Tony's had a great season, so maybe we could say that Ivan Tony, yes, you know, you'd put him over Bale. Jared Bowen, not a chance in the world. And that's with all due respect to Jared Bowen. One of my favourite moments from last season was Jared Bowen scoring against City to keep us in the title race. So Jared Bowen has a special place in my heart. But there's no way that he's getting in a mixed English and Welsh squad. Ew, that felt weird to say over Gareth Bale. Absolutely fraudulent take. That's just ridiculous. How is this man, how is Gabriel Agbonglaho paid to talk about football? You could uh, make the argument about Aaron Ramsey when he was at the peak of his powers, but he hasn't been at the peak of his powers for a long time. He seems to perform when he plays for Wales, so does Gareth Bale, so does Joe Allen. All of these players, when they go on international duty, seem to outperform their usual standard. Well, aside from Gareth Bale, because his usual standard's been absolutely phenomenal. But to suggest that even on recent form, Gareth Bale isn't making it over Matt Marcus Rashford, who was picked for the English squad. He isn't making it over Callum Wilson, who was picked for the English squad. And that's no knock on Callum Wilson. He's been sensational. But come on. There's levels. Gareth Bale, Callum Wilson. Even Jack bloody Grealish. Gareth Bale, for me, even gets in it over Jack Grealish. And I know I'm biased. But come on. You cannot tell me that when Gareth Bale plays for Wales, he's not better than Jack Grealish. It's an absolutely stupid opinion. There's no other word for it. That's not me calling Gabby stupid. That's saying his opinion, his opinion is stupid. Just because he plays in the MLS now, you must have forgot. It does not mean that he's worse than these English players, please. He has dragged Wales to qualifying for this bastard tournament in the first place. He's even dragged LAFC to a bloody trophy. Gareth Bale has done the impossible, and this is not acknowledged enough. He has literally done the impossible. He's won a trophy with Spurs. With Spurs! Gareth Bale, for me, is the greatest Welsh player in history. And that's just, of course, my opinion. And, of course, it comes from the fact that I'm from a younger generation. You know, there will be a generation out there that remembers John Charles, Mel Charles, that saw Ian Rush play. Ryan Giggs, some people may have him in there, but he didn't really turn up for Wales. Yeah, in my personal opinion, Gareth Bale is the greatest Welsh player in history and one of the most underrated players of all time. Absolutely incredible. It is criminal how lowly he is rated by the, the general footballing consensus. But for me, it's another case of pure... English bias in the media that needs to be eradicated, that needs to be stamped out. Any country or club that isn't English, for me, is automatically put on a lower level by these English pundits just because it's not England. And I get being patriotic and all that jazz, but there's being patriotic and then it's just not looking with your eyes there's not listening with your ears it's not watching a football it's just it's just stupid. And yeah, talk sports seriously need to reevaluate their criteria for pundits because hiring any old player from the bastard retirement home and sticking a microphone in their face just isn't doing it for me <laughs> especially when you have ridiculous takes like this do better gabby do better garrison you know what to do just puffed up and strike and strike 